prospects for Africa. The African economy is going to accelerate this year. From a rather brisk growth rate of 5% in 2013, Sub-Saharan Africa's economy specifically will muster 6% this year. Of course, that builds on a fairly lengthy, strong performance over the last decade. And there are a variety of reasons that is providing impetus for Africa's economic outperformance. For instance, many economies are harnessing the benefits of increased oil production. Some economies are benefiting from heightened emphasis on infrastructure spending. And quite simply, the reforms from yesteryear are beginning to bear fruit. Reforms such as low inflation and just general macroeconomic stability and more sensible fiscal management is buoying many African economies. But in 2014, it is going to be slightly more special. Sub-Saharan Africa is going to be the fastest growing region on the planet, even surpassing broader Asia. We anticipate that the broader Asian region will grow by around 5.5%, and with Sub-Saharan Africa growing at 6%, it'll place it at the top of the league table in terms of growth. And there's another reason for celebration. For the first time in living memory, inflation is likely to fall below the growth rate. So we anticipate inflation of around 5.5% at the end of this year, and with growth averaging 6%, that will be remarkable and, as I suggested, unprecedented. Low inflation is to be welcome in its own right, because what it does is it boosts real income. And of course, central banks Witnessing low inflation will be more inclined to lower interest rates. And so cheapening credit and allowing for the deepening of credit markets, be it households wanting to buy cars and homes or businesses wanting to expand their investment horizon. If we look at a few local markets, such as, say, Angola and Nigeria, we note that they will benefit plentiful from what has been quite high and stable oil prices. Angola specifically has continued to increase oil output and so benefiting also from higher volumes. Nigeria has been unable to increase volumes because of instability in the Niger Delta, but that notwithstanding the high oil prices that it has been fetching has been beneficial. Nigeria's non-oil economy has also been a meaningful source of growth inspiration. In fact, over the last three to four years, it is the non-oil economy of Nigeria that has been more rapid a contribution to economic growth. But other places will also show favorable performance. So investment in infrastructure, be it energy, or bulk public infrastructure, or in the resources sector, is buoying the market in Ghana, Mozambique, Niger, the DRC, even Sierra Leone. A few th trends to watch in 2014 is that agriculture and proper commercial agriculture will become more meaningful in many markets, and the same for manufacturing and higher quality, higher margin services. And economies that stand out in this respect include Kenya, Uganda, and even Ethiopia. So all in for sub-Saharan Africa, whether it is low income and fragile states, whether it is the oil dominant economies or the non-oil but still resource dominant economies or middle income countries, it will be a broad swathe of very strong and in fact for the most part outperformance relative to even last year. Now that is not to suggest that there won't be pockets of weakness and to dress up the African narrative in a romantic light. There will be elements of weakness. For example, in Mali and in Guinea-Bissau, domestic political volatility has undermined that economy. There is some burgeoning tensions in terms of the political dynamic in Mozambique, for instance. And of course, time and again, there are curveballs that we will not anticipate, such as the very tragic events in Kenya in recent times, but that notwithstanding. Sub-Saharan Africa specifically, and Africa more generally, continues to claw and rise in terms of global standing in, in, when measured in terms of output. And we anticipate another splendid year in 2014 for the continent.